Hi everyone, this is Chantal Howard with From Ideal to Real, helping to make your lofty and holy pipe dreams more accessible in everyday living, especially as it relates to your homeschooling. I'm excited to come to you for the first time on video. I think this is going to be a great new way for us to interact. So stick around while we dive into this little spotlight moment about the difficult topic of disagreeing, disagreeing with our children in particular, but also our spouses. Homeschooling is often a very touchy subject. It's one in which we have to have confidence and leadership and motivation. And oftentimes we can feel so run down by the disagreements. And honestly, they can take us by surprise. Truth told, we're not very good at disagreeing with others and then loving them still. In most situations, when we get into an argument, we kind of would rather just eliminate the thought, the person, <laughs> the, the disagreement altogether. Our tendency is to run. And with our children, it's often to guilt trip them or manipulate them into trying to agree with us. And the reality is, my friends, that as parents, we can employ better tools and we ought. Scripture calls us to not provoke our children to anger and so here are three quick tips that I encourage you to try to put into practice. The first is to genuinely, honestly, and completely hear your children. Now this relates in particular to your teenage kids, those that are having strong opinions emerging and they're trying their best to begin to spread their logical wings. They're trying out new ways of thinking and debating and it is very natural for them to want to resist. Whether we like it or not, God has built into them this mechanism that is going to propel them out into the world and they need to practice. Unfortunately, it often hurts when they practice on us. So let's listen. Listen for the wound. Listen for the influence, the background. What's happened that's brought them to this place where they hold this opinion so strongly that they're ready to start in some really intense mud at us. And when we can hear them and we can say phrases like, tell me more, tell me more, let me hear you, I want to understand, we are going to find that their level of intensity will naturally begin to fall because they don't expect us to not fight back and to not be hot-headed and fiery and to throw at them that it's we're the authoritarian ones in the family, we're the parents, gosh darn it. The commandment is to respect and honor your mother and father. How dare you talk back to me, right? We need to learn to listen. Point number two, listening doesn't mean agreeing. And we can make that very, very clear to our children and to our spouses surrounding topics with homeschooling or, or putting our children back in, in public school or what kind of curriculum or how to conduct the schedule each day. We can simply say, I hear you, but I don't agree. And we can be confident in that. It is important for us to know that listening doesn't mean acquiescing. The third point that is important to remember is that if and when we choose to share our opinion back, we need to be prepared that that judgment that we often have towards others and their thoughts may in fact come back at us and they may judge us and they may throw back and they may fight back, they may resist. But the likelihood of them being influenceable comes from setting the ground of listening, of understanding, and of being clear and trying to be peaceful in the midst of this very tense situation. The sooner we get comfortable with them judging our thoughts and judging our opinion, the more we are going to be confident and we aren't going to be manipulated and we aren't going to try to manipulate and control them, which is the tendency when we feel out of control, we want to hold on to others and control them. Yeek, doesn't sound like a relationship builder to me. So those are your three tips. I am hopeful that you will practice these and that you will remember that just because you have a thought or a feeling emerge around an argument, that that does not mean that that comes from the other person. You are responsible for your thoughts and your opinions, even when you are barraged by them or caught off guard. 
So practice learning to stay in control of your thoughts and your feelings. This is a tough one, but I am confident, my friends, that you can do this. Learning to disagree and remain amicable is such a beautiful thing. And it's such a needed skill in today's world. And it's one that in our homeschool formation is going to be one of the greatest lessons that we can hand to our children in preparation for their marriages and their jobs and to be influencers in the world. Fulton Sheen would often say, don't listen to what a person says, listen to why they say it. What is the wound? What is the wound underneath the anger and learning to be calm and collected, hearing the other person and being okay with their judgment of our opinion is going to make us into more peaceful and more confident parents. All right, my friends, thank you for joining me for this episode of From Ideal to Real. I look forward to having you with me again, hopefully on video next round, as we dive deeper into these beautiful spotlights surrounding making your life more holy and more free in everyday living. All right, take care.